I said before that I wasn't going to put the seals in the vents, but I just had a call from the uh, owner and he said, oh, put the vent seals in because he said I've been bodging them up. <sighs> so that's what we're going to do. Basically, all we need is a pair of pliers to take the pins out and these little uh, gear wrench spanners to go underneath and take them off. Uh, he's also asked me that the, the front screen's got a crack in it. So I haven't got any windscreens and this is a heated windscreen. I'll tell you about that in a second. Anyway, we can only get one stop, the nearest ones from Rovers North in the States in Vermont. Uh, that's a thousand Canadian dollars plus shipping. Ooh, that's going to be expensive. So we're going to have to think of something else. Um, the heated screens, in my opinion, are only for um, demisting. That's it. Uh, some people get this idea that these aftermarket screens that are fitted to defenders, you know, you can drive around in snow and it'll melt all the snow off. Well, not really when it's about four inches thick. They're, they're just really demisters because this one I fitted oh years ago, years ago. I, I just don't touch them now because they're so expensive. If they break, I've got to. It, it costs me a fortune, so I get window fitters to do them now. But um, this one was put in with a timer, so it's only on a 10-minute timer, which a heated screen should have. A lot of people bang them in straight to the, you know, like through a fuse into the battery. The problem is because it's got those little. Uh, lines in the screen which is the demist part itself a little heated element they act like fuses and blow you know when they get a bit weak so then you'll drive around and you'll have great big stripes on your window where it doesn't demist and then they're very useless so like i said that's why time is important anyway less of the rambling about that it's a bit windy my neighbor's cutting trays down i don't know why and um Let's see if we can get these vents out. So I think I'll just leave the camera running, eh? Why not? Why, uh, so anyway, that's right, okay. <laughs> oh, the vent. I uh, say so I got that one open. I'll open this one because it's easier. With a bit of luck, there's two screws under there. Now this is a lot easier if you've got the bonnet off. I don't know what he's done. He said he'd done something to it. These vents are a nightmare. But the foam seals are a lot better. There's one screw out. The, lot, the foam seals are a lot better than the, um, the rubber seals. Yeah, usually when I do these, I take the bonnet off, but because I'm on my own today, I don't want to scratch his paint. What happens if I take these pins off? Oh, that's easy. You just saw me take it off, I haven't set that up at all. But you can see the seal itself is actually in very good condition. But what's wrong with it? It's dropped with the heat. It's just dropped down. Uh, if you look very carefully here, you can see the impression of the edge of the uh, bulkhead vent, but it goes over the top of here. 
Uh, would water get in? Well, I'm not really sure, but we've got to make some money this week, so we'll put some new seals on. But if you look very carefully on the on the uh, on the panel itself, it's got a raised lip, so any water coming down shouldn't really get into there. It should go around the sides and down. Well, that's that's the theory. Now I'll just pop off and get a seal while our lumberjack neighbour is chopping most of his house down. With the panel cleaned up as much as we can, we cleaned off as much, but the, the problem was because it had this old type of seal on. You know, well, the, the old type of seal with a peel-off double-sided tape. It's extremely difficult to get off without using sort of chemicals and things like this, but it's good enough. It looks a bit bitty, but it'll be all right. You know, there's a few bits of foam kicking on, but you, you, I don't know, it must be a technique. Anyway, uh, these forms are made out of two de different densities of foam. This looks like it's a closed cell foam and an open cell foam. The open cell foam's just like a sponge, but this is like a high density sponge. And they're quite soft, you know what I mean? So the idea is to somehow take off the backing. There we go, I've got no nails because of this job. Like that. There we go. Now, this is really sticky stuff. So it's a good idea just to peel a little bit off at a time and go right into the corners. Right? And then bring this back. Make sure it's going to go... right into the corner of here as well. Now we want to get this as close to the edge as possible. Same with this one. Put that in your pocket before it blows away. And the environmentalists have a go at me. I'll put it over next door's fence later. So basically that's what it should look like. Very tight to the edges. You can see a difference between the old one where it had shrunk down. So that's going to seal right really, really nice. The problem with these um, these vents. It's sort of a good idea, but well, they were sort of too long, if you see what I mean. The pivot point is here, the latch is here, but not in the middle. And that's why you'll find them, they'll be very tight at this end, and this end will be sticking out. Because you can't pull them evenly, if you see what I mean. That's why these forms are quite nice. Because even if they, they don't look flush on the panel, at least if, this, if they're catching that lip on the, bul on the bulkhead, then they're going to seal, all right? Um, so let's get them fitted. Now, uh, first of all, I'm just going to go and get a bit of uh, crown rust proofing to put on those screws. Here we go. Just going to put a bit of rust proofing in those those holes so it's going to make it easier to get back on again. Because these are a bugger. What I'm going to do is I'm going to run the bolts down to make sure that they're nicely lubed up before I fit them. Some of the very early ones, had, uh, I think it was like Whitworth threads in there. <laughs> oh, Lord knows why. Uh, this one here has been over tightened at some time, so that's going to be fun. Now, let's get it the right way around. Now, just to make life a bit more interesting, these are the, the pivots kind of loose on here.
they are. You're a bugger to get started. It fell out again. Bugger. Okay. I'll have to persevere with this because my battery's getting a little bit low. On this side I'm going to try a different technique. I'm going to tip the vent forward and see if I can get the centre pivot bolt out. Um, it seems to be easy but for some reasons these Land Rovers, the vents never seem to go like fully open, fully closed. There's usually a little bit of a discrepancy. I've got that one on, that looks okay. The threads on one bolt isn't very clever, but the problem is they're a captive nut on the vent, and that means once that's stripped, a new cap a new vent because you are or tap it out if you can. It's a bit tricky because the tap's got a point on it and you'll go through the end of the uh, the vent, you know the the, the aluminium. Anyway, it's it's sealed up, it's looking nice, but let me see if I can get this one off. Yes, I see what he means by about bodging one up, so I was perhaps wrong on that. Um, yeah, he's put some foam in there, but it's just too hard, so we've got to get that out and uh, reseal it. You can, I don't know if you can see on here, you can see where the vent was touching here, like the bulkhead. Nothing down here, well, very little, and a bit on there, so we'll put the proper foam seals in. So this is the next day, and it's been raining again, and um, it's still leaking out of here. Now, I don't think it's leaking through this, but I just wanted to show you where the water's dripping through. It's coming along this gutter here, coming down here, and getting, th you know, you can see it coming down here. But most interesting was here. You see the water's coming down along this back edge. <clears throat> the problem is that water's supposed to come along here and through here and down. And it's getting through the bolts again. Man, oh man. So it looks like I'm going to have to take that off and get some uh, serious sealing done somehow. You can see where it's dripping down this side. Filling this cap there, there it goes. You see, now it's not getting in through the foot through the footwell top here because I put some dum dum in and that's sorted that out. Water's coming down, but if we look inside, you can see water where it's dripping down here. Well, it's obviously not out the vent seal, it's out of here somewhere. Well, in fact, look, oh, it's coming up from there. Look, now that means if it's coming up from there on the inside can you see that just here ha ha it's coming from one of these seals up here on the inside of the roof now they've been replaced once i replaced those once before so where's water getting in through the top because it's not coming through the seal that's for sure that is coming through the inside up here. I wonder what it's like at the other side. Well, this is all nice and dry down here, but it's wet down here. Now, is that residual water from before? Because I can't see... Oh, wait a minute, what's that up there? Oh, no, it's just shiny... Uh, that's not wet, that's just shiny stuff up there. Can you see that? There's not no water here. You can't see anything dripping down, so I think that's just residual water. But this side here is going to be a problem. I'll have to uh, pull off the door trims, like that plastic garnish that's up there. Pull that off, pull the handle off, and see if that gutter's wet inside. Hmm. Well, but at least I've seen where it's coming from. It's not out of the uh, windscreen seal, because that's all nice and dry down there. 
Hmm, we'll have to have another look at this. This is a mystery. Well, we'll sign this off. You know, it was raining all night, so... But, you know, we've had seal around here, look. These have been replaced. That one's compromised a bit, but it shouldn't, shouldn't leak. Man, finding leaks in Land Rovers, it could be coming from absolutely anywhere. Absolutely anywhere. These seem to be doing the job. Uh, water's beading down here. Same as here, look. That's all right. Please about that. So it's back to the drawing board. Let's pull them seals out on another video. Well, those trims and see if we can find out where the water's coming from. The thing is, you can only do it when it's raining. You can't, you can't find leaks when it's dry. What's this side like? See, because the car's on an angle, all the water's going that away. Hmm. The, these seals seem to be okay. They're, they're all right. They're fitted nice. I'm not bothered about that. But it, it, I'm, I'm convinced now that that water is coming through the top, giving the impression it's coming through the bolt. But that gasket needed changing anyway, because it was definitely coming through the bolt. But now it's higher up. Don't think it's from the sunroof. I don't know where it's coming from. Oh well, another video for another day. See you later. Bye.